What a beautiful song that illustrates the power of the resurrection. Hey, Calvary, we are so glad that you've joined us today. And Lake Havasu City, Parker, and other homes across the United States, we have joined together separately for worship to celebrate Easter. And we're glad you've joined us because uh, you're not alone. I mean, you may be isolating socially, but we don't want anyone to feel isolated because we're in this together. And, and if you have a need, whether that's to talk with someone or for food and supplies or even a financial need, then please contact us at Calvary. We want to help. Now, on a, on a positive note, God is at work in this crazy world. He's changing lives. He's bringing hope. And, and the world is crazy right now. I mean, there is no doubt about that. Uh, it's changed drastically just in the last month. I mean, you know, we wouldn't have even imagined at the beginning of this year that we would be celebrating Easter online. That, that's just crazy. But, and there's been a ton of other changes that we've experienced as well. Like, yeah. uh, I mean, our whole vocabulary has changed, right? Because now we've got the word social distancing. We didn't even know what that was a month ago. Now we're experts at it. Hey, and one of the ways that I've experienced some change in all this is I've noticed that whenever I go to open up a door, if I'm, my key works, I only use my key to open it. And if my key doesn't work and I have to use the doorknob, I cover my, my hand with my sleeve and then grab the door and then run inside and wash my hands. Yeah, uh, here's another change. I actually waited in line at 6 a.m. to get into a grocery store. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and I don't know if you've been watching some of my Facebook videos, but uh, I have been hunting toilet paper. I'm hunting toilet paper. Yeah, well, you have five women in your house. Uh, toilet paper is going to be uh, always a hunt for you. Yes, I'm afraid it is. <laughs> hey, another uh, kind of cool thing that's happened out of this is a whole new generation has learned how to cook. Yeah, that's right. A whole new generation has learned how to cook. And as my wife is teaching, uh, we're going through all of our Zoom lessons every day. Prayer and paddlings are back in every school across the country. <laughs> Uh, now, one of the, the best things that may have come out of this crisis is that parents everywhere have developed a deeper admiration and respect for teachers. That's true. So there's a lot of change that we're experiencing today. What we want to do is take a look at Luke 24 and focus in on an incredible story of change. The disciples changed as they moved away from disappointment and fear. Yeah, now most of us are familiar with the Easter story, uh, the story of Jesus' death and resurrection, but we seldom think about the struggle of Jesus' followers to actually believe that he was alive. Yeah, his, his friends, his followers, his disciples watched him suffer a cruel death. He was beaten with rods and whips, with rock and glass at the tips. They watched the nails go down into his hands and his feet. Mm. They watched the crown of thorns get, get crammed into his skull. They watched the sword go deep into his side to pierce his heart. Those disciples, those men, those friends, they watched him gasp out his last breaths. They, they watched him die. Yeah, and then they had to take him down from the cross place him in a tomb, seal the entrance, and walk away, knowing that Jesus was dead. I mean, their hopes and dreams died with him. He, he was supposed to be the Messiah. He was the one who healed the sick and gave sight to the blind. He's the one who made the lame walk. He miraculously fed the multitudes. These are people who had sacrificed everything to follow him, and now all they had were broken dreams and grief-filled hearts, right up until Easter morning. And that's where we want to pick up with the story. Luke chapter 24, verses 1 through 11. I'm going to encourage you to follow along at home. Uh, we're going to put the words on the screen. Maybe even your family could read this out loud together. Uh, the Gospel of Luke chapter 24, beginning at verse 1. But on the first day of the week, at early dawn, they went to the tomb, taking the spices they had prepared. And they found the stone rolled away from the tomb. But when they went in, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were perplexed about this, behold, two men stood by them in dazzling apparel. And as they were frightened and bowed their faces to the ground, the men said to them, Why do you seek the living among the dead? He is not here, but has risen. 
Remember how he told you while he was still in Galilee that the Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified and on the third day rise? And they remembered his words. And returning from the tomb, they told all these things to the eleven and to all the rest. Now it was Mary Magdalene and Joanna and Mary the mother of James and the other women with them who told these things to the apostles. But these words seemed to them an idle tale and they did not believe them. They did not believe them. I mean, think about this. The, when Jesus' followers heard the news that the tomb was empty, when they heard the report that angels said, he's not here, he's risen, they didn't throw a party. They didn't celebrate. They didn't uh, get, you know, start rejoicing with one another. Instead, they thought it was nonsense. They did not believe. And if you know this story, you know that just a few days later, these men who did not believe that Jesus had risen from the dead, they did not believe that Jesus was alive, that they would change their minds. So as we focus on this story of these men, we want to discover why they changed their minds. And the reason that we want to do that is simple. Because if, if you can relate to these men, if you can relate to their disbelief, if like them, you've thought that the resurrection of Jesus sounds like nonsense, sounds like an idle tale, or, or maybe you believe in your head, but you've never experienced any life change, I want you to know your mind can be changed too. Your, your life can be changed as well. Yeah. So let's look at the disciples' faith story. Uh, how did these men become convinced that Jesus was alive? I mean, how did they go from cowardice to courageous advocates for Jesus? How did they change their minds from doubt to fearless faith? Well, the story continues in the Gospel of Luke chapter 24. Yeah, in, in Luke 24, we see that after he left the tomb, Jesus appeared to a couple of the men walking down a road. Those men after Jesus appeared to them, ran and found the disciples and he began to tell them, or they began to tell them that Jesus was alive. Uh, just the women were telling the truth. The story wasn't nonsense. It wasn't an idle tale. And just as the men began to tell the disciples their story about Jesus appearing to them, we read in Luke 24, beginning at verse 36, then all of a sudden, Jesus himself was suddenly standing there among them. Peace be with you, he said. But the whole group was startled and frightened, thinking that they were seeing a ghost. Why are you frightened, Jesus asked. Why are your hearts filled with doubt? Now, a key phrase, a key word in that question that Jesus asked is the word that Jesus used uh, for the word doubt. He used a word that describes a person questioning something that is true. Uh, they were uh, seeing with their eyes, but they were not believing with their mind. Uh, they were deliberating within their own hearts. So even though they were seeing <laughs> Jesus, uh, you know, face to face in person, they had their doubts. They had their doubts like I had doubts when I heard that the NBA had suspended their season. Anybody out there with me? It, you know, that Major League Baseball opening day had been postponed, that, that they canceled March Madness and, mm. and the worst of all, that they postponed the Masters. Although I did hear this week that they are scheduling it for November. So there is hope still. I'm so happy for uh, you. Yeah, I am too. But see, here's the thing. I knew it was true, but it was incredulous. I just couldn't wrap my head around the fact that all these changes were taking place. So maybe you've heard the message of Jesus repeatedly. Maybe you've heard the story of Easter repeatedly, but you've had your doubts. Well, guess what? You're in good company because the followers of Jesus had their doubts too. I mean, Jesus was physically with them, looking them eye to eye, eating with them, but they still doubted right up until uh, it tells us in Luke 24, 45, that Jesus opened their minds to understand the scriptures. What did it take for these men to believe? The same thing that we need. That's right. In order for us to change our minds and to believe in Jesus as Savior, it requires God opening our minds to believe. So if you have doubt about the resurrection, 
or, or if you have doubt about the power of God that can change your life, or if you have doubt that the forgiveness that God offers can actually forgive all of your sin, or if you have doubt that God loves you and is with you during this crazy time, I want to challenge you to do something. I want to challenge you to invite God to open your mind. Now, I'm not saying at this point that you're going to become a believer in Jesus, but would you be willing to say something like, God, if you are there, would you open my mind? Go ahead and do that right now if you want to. God, if you're there, open my mind. Now that you've invited God to, uh, maybe, maybe that you've invited God to open your mind, I, I want you to hear Pastor Chad's story of what it took for him to change his mind about what it means to follow Jesus. Yeah, I'd be glad to share my story of faith. Um, see, I was raised in a, a home that was very religious, very uh, much a Christian home. Uh, a lot of you share this story. I mean, I went to church all the time. My parents were believers in Jesus. They loved him. And so I grew up around faith. And when I was eight years old, I confessed Jesus as my savior. I acknowledged that I was a sinner and I needed his forgiveness. And, and so I, uh, I made that commitment to follow Jesus with my life. I was baptized when I was nine years old, like uh, some of the kids that were baptized today. And, and, and then I grew up in the faith. But as I got older, especially in my later teen years, I came to that place where I didn't really like me. I looked in the mirror and I saw somebody who was a failure. I saw somebody who was a loser and I didn't like who I was. I didn't like my life. And, and so uh, I prayed and, and surrendered to God who I was, asking him to change me. And I, I literally prayed something like this. I said, God, I don't like me, but apparently you love me. So change me. Change my life, change my mind, change my personality, change my, my heart, change everything about me because your plans are better than my plans and I wanna follow you. And, and you know what? God changed me then, he's changing me now, he's been changing me ever since and I'm a new creation in Christ Jesus because I surrendered to him. That's, that's my faith story. Uh, Joe? What's, yeah. your, what's your story of faith? Yeah, that, that is so awesome. I'm so glad that uh, Jesus changed Chad's life. Let me tell you about how Jesus changed my life, my story of faith. Uh, now, I have to admit uh, that every time I unexpectedly sneeze or cough, I have to push down right now this nudge of fear. Uh, I think almost uh, this, this little fear starts to well up that says, I've got the coronavirus or I have COVID-19. But the reason I can push down that fear is rooted in my faith that Jesus is alive today. See, I always knew about Jesus, but knowing about the life and the death and the resurrection of Jesus did not change my life until 1991. So I, I grew up a fearful kid. I grew up in a divided home. My dad was a raging alcoholic. He sexually and verbally abused me uh, and my mom, she was a, a very devout Catholic. I grew up keeping the secret of what my dad was doing to me, and I also grew up learning about Jesus. But believing that Jesus was alive was not enough. After I graduated from high school, I was invited to attend a youth group Bible study. And after I visited for a few more weeks, the youth pastor invited me to put my head knowledge about Jesus into action and received Jesus as my savior. I became a follower of Jesus, not because of what I already knew about Jesus, but because I received that truth. I received Jesus as my savior. Let me ask you, is God opening your mind to believe? You've heard the disciples story. You've heard Chad's story. You've heard my story. We have one more story that we want you to hear about today. Yeah, we've invited a young lady named Jamie to tell you her story of dramatic life change in Jesus Christ. So Jamie, uh, please share. Hi, my name's Jamie and I wanted to share with you guys a little bit about uh, God's grace and mercy that he's shown in my life. I grew up in an alcoholic home and with that came a lot of pain and dysfunction and brokenness. And I carried a lot of that into my young adult life. Uh, in high school, I tried a lot of drugs and alcohol, 
and by my 20s, I was heavily addicted to opiate medications. Having an addiction to opiate medications led me to making a lot of decisions that weren't in my best interest, and uh, because of that, I became a felon and was sent to prison. Through that, I tried to find myself a little bit and repair a little bit of the damage inside while I was away, but I hadn't found God. When I came home, I still had all that brokenness and pain inside. I didn't know how to handle life, and I wasn't sure who to turn to, and eventually, I turned to drugs again. By 2013, I had become heavily addicted to methamphetamines and heroin, uh, and by 2018, I was using those drugs intravenously. In October of 2018, I had an almost fatal overdose. I had overdosed in the front seat of someone's car and they rushed me across town to take me to the hospital. Uh, I had no heartbeat when I arrived. It took two shots of Narcan and being shocked with a defibrillator to be brought back. I remember that day. I remember coming out of that overdose and having this unbearable pain inside. I remember thinking to myself that I wished I hadn't made it through that. I, um, I, I knew inside that I wanted to go back out and use right in that moment, and, uh, but I didn't understand how insane that was. Everything inside of me told me that I needed these drugs. God had a different plan for me that day, and he sent a friend in uniform to arrest me that day and take me to jail. I spent a couple of months in jail after that, and during that time in jail, I came across this Celebrate Recovery Bible, and I wasn't even sure what I was reading. I'd try praying. I wasn't even sure who I was praying to at the time, but I kept going. God uh, led me to this sober living home in Kingman after being released from jail, and I was surrounded by these like-minded women who were Christ followers and inspired a lot of my walk with God. I learned there who God was, who he saw me to be, and how forgiving he was in my life. I, at some point, decided that I could be self-reliant again, and I let go of my trust in God and went back to relying on myself to fulfill the needs that I had in life. And I put myself back in a bartending position, uh, told myself that I'd be safe and that I was strong enough. And on May 25th of 2019, I had another overdose that almost took my life. I uh, was revived on my bathroom floor. And I remember when I came out of that overdose, I couldn't believe I had landed back in that spot again. I just thought to myself, I thought I had it this time. I didn't understand. And I remember getting on my knees on that bathroom floor and praying to God, telling him I didn't know when I had stopped listening to him, but I was listening in that moment. Never before in my life had I finally been done. I remember putting my hands in the air and telling God that he could have everything. He could have my children, my addiction, my pain, my family. I wanted him to have it all and I wanted him to fill me with whatever it was that he needed to fill me with so that I could serve a purpose for him. I remember opening the bathroom door and coming out of that bathroom and it was as if I had been blind before and I just saw things so differently. Over the next few months, I started to feel like God was telling me certain things never uh, benefited me, certain behavior patterns weren't a part of what he wanted for me anymore, and so I slowly began to work on those things. I stopped just attending church, and I started serving at church. I stopped just going to CR, and I joined a step study in CR. I stopped just attending my Narcotics Anonymous meetings, and I started really working the programs. And in all of that, things began to change for me. I had thought a year ago that parts of my life that had been broken and taken and, and left demolished were irreparable. I thought that there was no way I'd ever get my kids back, 
find someone who'd love me in all my mess, ever speak to my father again, ever have my career back. God has restored so many things in my life. And through that, it's become unbelievably clear that I can trust Him in all areas. Today, I get to do things like this, share my testimony with people, and do it all for God's glory. There was a time in my life where I wished that I hadn't made it back from that overdose, but I could not foresee the blessings and the beauty of the life that God had in store for me just a short time down the road. It was when I surrendered and became available to Him that He was able to begin healing me and healing my life. If you're out there struggling and you feel like there's no way out, I'm here to tell you I've been there and there's a way out. His name is Jesus. Call on Him. Wow, what an amazing story. Uh, mm. What a powerful story of life change in Jesus. Uh, you've heard many stories of change today, people whose lives were changed by Jesus. Let me ask you, has God opened your mind to believe? See, some people sadly are going to miss heaven by the distance of 12 inches. That's from the, the distance between their mind and their heart. Mm. See, there are so many people that say they believe with their mind that Jesus is real, but they never place their trust in Him. Uh, people say they believe, but they never ask Him for forgiveness. People say they believe, but they've never accepted Him as their Savior. People say they believe He can give them a new start. Uh, people say they believe He can change their life, but they never turn away from their old life. Yeah. And, and the reality is God loves you. He, he sent Jesus into the world to be our Savior and to change our lives, our minds, and our destinies. And, and today we want to invite you to surrender to Jesus, to invite Him to forgive you of your sins and to change your life. Jesus said, for God so loved the world that He gave His one and only Son so that everyone who believes in Him will not perish but have eternal life. Jesus also said in the Gospel of Matthew, everyone who acknowledges me before men, I will also acknowledge before my Father in heaven. So are you ready to acknowledge Jesus as your Lord, to surrender to Him today? Uh, we want to invite you to make a decision to commit your life to following Jesus. In just a moment, I'm going to pray for you. Uh, and, uh, but see, my prayer for you doesn't, doesn't change your life. Uh, your words, you know, don't change your life. What matters is the intent of your heart. And I'm going to encourage you while I pray for you that you just voice a prayer to God that, that says something like this, God, I need you. God, I'm a sinner and I need you to forgive me. I need you to change me. I need you to save me. And, and, and invite God to make you a new creation. So if that's what you want to do. Just, just join me in prayer right now. Father, I, I thank you for the men and women who right now are committing their lives to following you. And I pray that you would reveal yourself to them, that you would open their minds and their hearts to the truth of God's word, and you would change their lives. Thank you for being our Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Man, if you just prayed uh, and meant it with your heart, if you believed in your head and now accepted Jesus as your Savior, the Bible tells us that you are a brand new person. Uh, the Bible teaches us that you have been made new. You are different. You have been changed. You have been forgiven for your sins and you are now a friend of God. Uh, if you made that decision, we wanna hear from you. Let us know about your decision. If you're watching on our website, you can let us know two ways. You can open a new tab and go to our contact page, or you can click the button that says, I've committed my life to Jesus. If you're watching through your phone or computer on Facebook Live or on YouTube, would you click on the link that just popped up in the comment section and follow the prompts to let us know. Yeah, and if you are a follower of Jesus, whether you've been a follower of Jesus for five decades or for five minutes, uh, there are some steps that you can take. Now, first of all, the step for everyone is this. Look, your life won't change until God changes your mind, so we want you to read the Bible. Just, just read the Bible. That's why we give them away at our campuses when we're meeting in person, uh, because we want you to encounter God's Word and, and let 
it change you. Let God speak to you through his word. So I'm just gonna encourage you to start reading the Bible. If you don't know where to start reading, read the Gospel of Luke. We shared the end of that story, start at the beginning. You'll recognize that as well. Uh, another great thing you can do if you wanna learn about following Jesus is watch Alpha videos on YouTube. Uh, they're free, you can go on there, and Alpha videos are just an introduction to the, what it means to follow Jesus, who Jesus is, why we believe the Bible, all these kinds of things that you may be wondering about, and that'll help you to learn about it. Now, that's for everyone. For some of you, uh, we wanna challenge you at this point. You've, you've confessed Jesus, you've made that commitment, but you've never proclaimed that publicly to the world in baptism. And, and you've seen some people today who express their faith in baptism. And we wanna encourage you to take that next step because following Jesus leads through the waters of baptism. And so if God is kind of leading you to do that, then let us know and we'd be glad to schedule a, a private baptism during this time of shutdown with just you and your family and we'll record it and we'll stream it to thousands of people who are watching our services to let them know that Jesus has changed your heart, changed your mind, changed your life. Yeah, so let me ask you this. What is your story of faith? You've heard all these stories of faith today. Does your family know your story of faith? H have you told your story of trusting in Jesus to your family, to your spouse, to your neighbors? I, I want to encourage you, take some time this weekend to share your story of faith. Uh, maybe with somebody uh, that is close by, um, maybe with a family, maybe with a friend, but as you share your story of faith, invite them to experience their story of faith and invite them to experience life change as well. In just a moment, the band is gonna come back out and they're gonna lead us in a closing song of worship and celebration. Uh, but I want to end our time together this morning in prayer. I want to invite you and your homes to join me. Let's bow our heads and let's call out to our life-changing God together. Let's pray. God, we thank you that you are the life changer. We thank you that you can change minds. We thank you that you give direction, that you give hope, that you give peace. And God, we are so grateful for this incredible Easter story. Thank you for the hope that we have in Jesus. Lord, we ask and invite you to continue to work and transform lives all over Lake Havasu City and in Parker and around the United States. Father, we love you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. And all God's people said in their homes, Amen. 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 Happy Easter. Happy Easter.